A lot of artists don't like the Royal Sable brush because it lacks control. Or does it? I wouldn't have given you two cents for a Royal Sable brush until I watched how excited Richard Schmid uh, got about his. I thought, well, if Richard Schmid uh, enjoys a Royal Sable, maybe there's something that I need to know there. So mm -hmm. I decided to give it a try. Not just any Royal Sable, but the Lane Nickel 5590 is the one that uh, we know works that has the qualities that do these neat, neat little things. They don't cost much and they come in all sizes. I want to show you just a couple of things uh, that you that you can do with the uh, with the Royal Sable. I call it my floppy brush because it's just that. It's nice, nice and floppy. Um, did I say it comes in all sizes? It, do, it does. Um, the, um, oh, it's going on. This is about size 12 and it comes in these wonderful floppy large sizes. Let me just take this little one and show you just a little bit of what you might be able to do with this one little brush. Now, there's an obvious thing that it will do, uh, sort of obvious. Now, I'm going to start out with a, uh, I'm going to start with a bristle brush here, and I'm going to come right up here, and I'm just going to um, uh, create some color uh, with the bristle brush, and uh, we would say we would say that this what might be. Uh, uh, you might have this as grasses or something like that. Alright, I'll lay the brush, brush down. I can come back with my, what I call my floppy brush, and place it in that area and just push it up and look at that. Wonderful, wonderful brush for creating grasses. <clears throat> and that may seem sort of obvious to you. Well, of course it would be a wonderful brush for creating grasses because almost any flush, floppy brush is going to be wonderful for creating grasses. Well, let me show you some other things that it can do. You might not realize that this is a wonderful brush for making twigs and, um, and limbs of trees and it, even sometimes tree trunks. So uh, let me just do this. I'm going to load some paint here in, in my floppy brush. And I'll just load all different kinds of colors. It doesn't make any difference what. And you see the more paint I load then the less floppy it gets because the color gets um, uh, the color allows those bristles to hang tight to each other. Now, um, so we can hold it like this and move it up and down like this and create um, the shapes that we might need for our trunks of trees, fence posts, you know, all different kinds of things like that. Just use your imagination. Then we can load it even further, get those bristles a little bit closer together, use the tip of it, and just by, uh, I hope you can see what I'm doing here, just by touching the tip to the canvas, you can pull it like this, and see, and you can get that very, very thin line that can produce wonderful um, for tree trunks and twigs. You can also use it for uh, doing things like, uh, well, doing things like, say, boards of a building where you would need uh, the boards to, the boards to, to, uh, be of, of a different, slightly different color, slightly different value, just by juxtaposing it side by side. You could do that sort of thing. So all you need to do is to investigate it. Hey. Just investigate the many things that it can do, and you will soon discover why Richard Schmidt is so enthusiastic over this Ling Nickel 5590. Oh, by the way,
you can do it for use it in this way when you have it fully loaded too. All sorts of things that you can do. Try it. Get, get yourself one of these little brushes. Play around with it. Oh, by the way, I need to say this. Um, it works really good for oil painters, acrylic painters, and gouache painters. Watercolor painters, there are other ro royal sables uh, that would probably work better for you. But you might give this one a try too. And there's your quick tip.